Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amarin Sviertsma. I am a professional violinist and sometimes I make little videos for YouTube for you guys. Today's video is all about nerves and anxiety and performance pressure. Um, I'm a little bit nervous to do this video. I feel like there's a lot of unspoken things to do with nerves and not feeling your best on stage and um, just general pressure in our world and I think it's really important to talk about these things and for people to feel that it's actually quite normal to have anxiety issues and yeah nerves <laughs> nerves are fine um, I have to kind of tell myself that too anyway um, so yeah I want to talk about these things I hope you guys won't judge me for my feelings and my sharing things and please let me know your thoughts as well and just know that this is how I experience things and I understand others may have other ways of doing things and that is great. So let's get into the video and I'll grab a cup of coffee. Alright, we are back with coffee and I thought I would start at the beginning. So I said I started playing when I was two and I started with the Suzuki method which is just everything by ear. Which is great for a couple of years and then my teacher got really stressed and I changed teachers to my previous teacher, Ko Schweizenbeek. She was a Dutch genius and she actually just passed away, um, I guess about a year ago now. I mean my first performance was probably when I was three but the one I really remember the most was my first kind of solo concert and I was playing this really fast piece called the Perpetuum Mobile by Ferdinand Ries and it was all fast notes and I practiced it so much and I remember my teacher let me play it in the concert because I think it was such a challenge that I'd had to practice it much more than anything I'd practiced before that was a bit easier and I was like oh this is exciting <laughs> I can practice this really hard and then get a good result I mean you could tell immediately you know the faster it got the better it got in my eyes and that was successful and I was quite stressed but also so extremely prepared that it went well even though I was stressed I think for the next few years after that, while I was still studying with my teacher, she prepared everything with me so much that she always used to say, you have a base level and if you're nervous, you can only go that much underneath your base level. It's not like if you've prepared really well, you can't go here, right? So you can go here or you can go here. If you have a great day, it's here. If you have a bad day, it's here. But it's not gonna just sink to the bottom and, you know, be a disaster. You're not gonna forget everything, right? I really I think that's true. I think for her way of pre preparing children, it was usually quite close to that level because, you know, we'd played this piece so many times and practiced it so many times and played it for her and played it for other people and played it in a class concert that once we got to the actual concert where we would probably be the most nervous um, we had all this experience of that behind us. I think probably the next like really noteworthy stressful time for me was when I was doing the Dutch national violin competition and I must have been around 21 at the time, maybe I just turned 22 and it was again an incredibly stressful time because probably my first time playing with a you know, professional orchestra, it was the orchestra of the conservatory but still with people who were planning to be professional musicians. I don't think I'd practiced that enough. I hadn't really assumed that I would get to the final and it was Brahms Violin Concerto, which is one of the great violin concertos, and I remember practicing that concerto for a week, just like extremely stressed at home and not really have had enough time to prepare that properly. Or, I mean, I had enough time, but not at that moment. 
I didn't use it well. And <clears throat> therefore I felt extremely stressed and probably played, you know, a little bit more underneath what I actually could or maybe I just wasn't quite ready to perform that particular piece at that particular moment. And I won third prize, it was very nice and I have really happy memories from playing that concert and the concerto and but yes, it was very stressful. Now, in my mind, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but in my mind, those are all happy memories. They're memories of stressful performances where I made some mistakes, probably, and was either well or not very well prepared. But the thing that was always the same was that I actually very much enjoyed playing. I am someone who loves performing and loves being on stage and playing for people. And I don't think that will ever change. However, lately I felt that <sighs> there's been a sort of a shift and it's probably something in my mind that I guess at some point, and I've heard also other people talk about this, that they get older and start putting more and more pressure on themselves or feeling pressure from outside because of what they've already achieved. Um, <laughs> let me just have one sip of my coffee. Basically, people put, and me included, I mean, I put so much extra pressure on myself nowadays than I did when I was, when I was that age. Because, you know, when I was doing this Dutch violin competition, I thought, ah, well, you know, I can do it again, you know? I'm still young, <laughs> there's still time, um, I can do it again after this. And now that I'm a bit older, I'm a professional, I'm performing in professional situations, I put a lot more pressure on myself because I feel, ah, I should be able to do this, right? I think that's a really a key element, the preparation and how you prepare for something and how also mentally you prepare yourself for the amount of pressure that you're going to be feeling on that stage. For me that's something that fluctuates immensely. I play a lot of concerts and most of the time I don't feel that nervous. Most of the time I'm not putting immense pressure on myself, which then makes the times that I am e even more hard. <laughs> In a way sometimes I wish that I would feel that kind of pressure for each concert so that each concert can be a kind of a stress test. I was recently watching this show on Netflix called Cheer about cheerleaders in a very very high level and they they run through their you know six five minute cheer um, like a hundred times before they perform it and for them it's even more intense because they end up only having one chance in the competition to do it right. Uh, preparation is key. I feel that the times that I've known that I would be extremely nervous for something and I've really prepared properly, it has gone pretty well. And I have been able really to enjoy the situation and the opportunity. Um, I'm talking now mainly about, there was um, a couple of years ago, I auditioned for a program in the UK called the Young Concert Artist Trust. I think that's what they're called, YCAT. And I remember in the, the semi-final audition, you auditioned for a panel of six, seven musicians and agents and that kind of thing. And I really didn't play that well, but I did get through to the final. And then I remember feeling this immense pressure because I wanted to prove that I could be there, I could do that. And it was, it was really a l only pressure coming from myself. You know, I didn't think that other people really had expectations of that, of me. Nobody had said to me, you know, oh, you better, I think you're gonna do well in this, or are oh, you better do well in this, or mm, yeah, if you get this then, right? It was just me. And I felt immense pressure, so I thought, okay, I'm going to prepare this as best I can, which meant for me running through my program in the worst circumstances, coming from you know, walking to the rehearsal space, completely cold, frozen fingers, and then immediately playing through. Or recording myself. Recording myself is always very useful because then it also helps to build confidence. You, you hear when you're playing at your worst, 
if it still sounds okay, you get this kind of confidence of, ah, oh, okay, you know, if I thought it was that bad and actually sounded okay, then, you know, in the, in the moment, if I'm really feeling terrible, it probably still sounds okay. And I remember then in the end, I played in Wigmore Hall in London, which is a beautiful venue and in itself also pressured because of the audience and the feelings that come with that hall. And we played for 25 minutes and I really enjoyed it. At the beginning, I was a little wobbly, you know, a bit shaky bow, a bit kind of like, oh shit, you know, I'm here now. <laughs> oh no. But I really enjoyed it. And I think for me, what is also so helpful and that I forget sometimes is this kind of, if I could do this, then I could do that. So now that I have so many of these different stressful experiences under my belt, <laughs> then every time that I do another one, I can come back to that and say, ah, but if I manage that, then I should be able to manage this. You know, it's not so different. It might be in a different country or in a different hall or different pieces, which usually is all the case. Um, but still, I can manage that. I do have to say, though, that there are also opportunities and times that out of nowhere I find myself extremely nervous. And then I think there are other coping mechanisms and ways of dealing with that um, that I can talk about a little bit. One audition once was the first time where I got an extremely shaky bow. I still remember that experience so vividly because I must have been 25, 26, something like that. It's quite a few years ago now. And um, I was in the audition, I felt very prepared, I was playing pieces I knew I'd performed, and all of a sudden my bow started shaking like crazy this and it just it threw me so much that and I was so upset after and oh my god how could that happen what was that just you know that it really upset me because I felt I had not been able to show who I was as a musician as a performer I wasn't able to think about projecting feelings and music and emotion and I was just thinking about this craziness going on here that is still something that happens sometimes and the, the best advice I've gotten to do with that is just to enjoy that experience. Just to go, oh my gosh, how weird is that that something is happening? How cool, how interesting, you know? What is going on here? How funny that I never feel that in the practice room. How funny that this is happening now and how can I enjoy that? I think it sounds kind of crazy, but I really try and do that now. I really try to remember that it's not the end of the world and it's a cool thing. The more that I experience this, the more that I can observe and take a step back and say, okay, this is happening. Um, cool, that's a way for me to practice extreme nerves. The more I can tell myself, you know, enjoy this moment, uh, in a way, observe yourself, see where this extreme pressure is coming from. Why do you feel that, you know? You're not a, a brain surgeon. You're not going to kill someone if you play a note with a shaky bow or if you don't quite hit a note or if your fingers are a bit stuck or if your sound isn't as beautiful as it could be. Th these things are not the end of the world and yet we put so much pressure on ourselves for everything to be perfect. And, and I do understand we work so hard as musicians to perfect everything. We're practicing and we're self-critiquing most of the time, at least, you know, you kind of should be. And sometimes we lose that connection with the enjoyment, with the the wonder of... <laughs> I sometimes find myself in, a, in strange situations in a horrible hall somewhere in the middle of nowhere playing and thinking, oh, how lucky am I that I can do this, right? How lucky am I that... I can share my emotions with people without talking to them and hopefully for other people to feel something when when they're listening to these pieces and this composer and bringing the emotion and the feelings and the, the thoughts of someone who is already dead through me to the audience. How amazing is that? 
sometimes we forget that and we focus so much on every note having to be perfect in the moment that it's not you have a kind of little meltdown every time because you think oh no i let you know all these people down <laughs> with a little bit of a shaky bow um or a bit too much pressure yeah, and these things can the minuscule changes can really alter how you feel on stage because you or we as musicians are so attuned to the fine little details that everything is blown massively out of proportion some ways that i have dealt with preparing for these kind of very high pressure concerts were um, a thing called the tapping solution which i'm kind of i always feel a bit nervous about sharing with people because I am very much not an, an airy fairy person <laughs> as you call it and I somehow always feel like everyone else has things <laughs> all sorted out and nobody else needs this and yet I know there are people that do. Basically it's just a form of meditation where you tap on parts of your body in order to release stress and help yourself get yourself in the right frame of mind and accept the fact that you're not perfect, that you you can be stressed and that your body is allowed to be in these states. I think part of the problem sometimes for me is that I, I so wish that I wasn't nervous and that's the same with the shaky bow that if I if I can't accept that that's happening, it's gonna get worse. Same with the nerves. If I'm just keeping it all inside and thinking, oh my God, I shouldn't be nervous. Why am I nervous? Nobody else is nervous. This is horrible. <laughs> it's just gonna get worse and worse. So I'm trying more and more lately to be honest with people and say, okay, look, I'm nervous, you know? So, <laughs> so what? <laughs> um, yes, and Visualizing also really helps me sometimes to, uh, my old teacher used to do that with us as well, to close your eyes and pretend that you are already on that stage, already playing for seas of people, or already playing the hardest piece in the world, and you imagine as best you can all the feelings and all the, the thoughts that might arise and how you're gonna deal with that can also work. It's just so different for everyone. Uh, I just, I feel with myself that I go through different periods. Sometimes if I have a, a whole row of extremely stressful times and concerts um, in a close kind of proximity to each other, that everything feels less stressful in a way. Because it's this kind of like, ah, but if I did this last week, then this this week is nothing compared to that or ah, if I could play this scary piece for a thousand people then this should be fine um, so that is definitely also a, a way of coping for me and it really just depends on the situation and my preparation and my feelings and maybe what what I've heard someone say um, I really want to mention to you guys that I've been listening a lot to a new well, a podcast which I've newly discovered um, is called Things Musicians Don't Talk About. I'll link them somewhere here. And I just, I love that they're talking about these issues. It's mental health, um, anxiety, all sorts of pressures and problems and, you know, how musicians deal with having children and lots of different things and I've just I've listened to a couple episodes now and I really love how open and honest they are and how how well they discuss these topics you know the kind of taboo topics of the professional music world um, and I was very inspired by them to also to share my experiences and to try not to be too scared of what what people will judge me for, you know, ah, well, you're a successful musician and what, you're still nervous for things and oh, you, sometimes you play badly, <laughs> Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And I will forever probably and I will always probably be working on myself in this way and trying to find 
a good middle ground between stress and anxiety and, and always stressing myself out about every little detail and you know feeling that I should also do that if I let go of that then <laughs> what am I then I won't be critical of myself at all so it really needs a bit of both basically I wanted to remind myself here that always after each concert there's I usually am celebrating that I enjoyed myself and that we made music and that it was a great experience and we just shouldn't forget and I shouldn't forget that it is such a privilege to share music and share emotion and share this joy all the time with people and that I have this talent that you know it, it, I feel so lucky and I love playing music and I, for me being on stage is the best part because you you get to share all of this with people and you feel their their feelings as well um, but of course it's also the hardest part because of the nerves and the, the pressure you put on yourself and just everything that is to do with that I mean I, I feel very pressured most of the time to keep my quality of my standard very high and um, never to let anyone down and sometimes that becomes a lot I would love to hear about you know things that you would like to share if you've had any experiences that you felt you couldn't tell others or you know, really anything and I would love to hear from you and I find this topic so interesting how how our bodies respond to you know fight and flight and uh, just nerves in general and all the ways that the body reacts and that our mind reacts and yeah it's uh it's fascinating we could talk about that a lot more and maybe i'll do another video at some point but let me know your thoughts below and please don't kill me for sharing my personal feelings <laughs> online Ah, good. Um, I wish you all the very best of days and hope to see you soon. Goodbye.